I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on advanced functions. This is a prerequisite curriculum for students going to university and especially taking calculus. The quote in Ontario is MHF4U. In my sessions with students, I've come across many questions which they find very difficult to solve. In this particular video, we'll discuss one of such questions posted by my student, Chelsea. Now here, we have an application question where we are discussing the water quality, checking the bacteria count in tap water and in pond water. And in solving this inequality, we can figure out whether the bacteria concentration could be more in tap water or not. So let's see the solution. Hi, Chelsea. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? Very good. Very good. So today, what do you want to do? Uh, today, I have a test coming up on reciprocal functions. So I want to cover that today. Sure. Why not? So do you have any questions or doubts which you would like to clear? and Or how do you want me to you know, help you out? Um, I have some questions that I did from my assigned homework mm -hmm. that I had some trouble with, so I wanted to ask you those. Sure, let's take them first, and then I can actually provide you with some more questions. So that means you have worked a lot. You solved all these questions uh, without any problems, right? Only these are your doubts? Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Question number nine. Can you please read it? Um, the equation f of t equals 5t over t squared plus 3t plus 2 models the bacteria count in thousands. For a sample of tap water that is left to sit over time, t in days. The equation g of t equals 5t over t squared plus 9 models the bacteria count in thousands for a sample of pond water that is also left to sit over several days. In both models, T is greater than zero. Will the bacteria count for the tap water sample ever exceed the bacteria count for the pond water? Justify your answer. Okay, so it's an inequality which you have to solve, correct? Mm -hmm. So we are given two functions. So we're saying first function f of T models bacteria count in thousands. Remember that both are in thousands, that's good. For a yeah. sample of water, tap water. And G of T is bacteria count in pond water. The question is, will bacteria count for the tap water sample ever exceed? So we basically want to solve this equation. What is this value? Is that clear to you? Yeah. Because the tap water is F of T. So that's the inequality which you need to solve. So let's see how do we solve this inequality. So we have... 5 over 5t over t squared plus 3t plus 2. We want to see whether it is greater than wait for a second. We want to see if it is greater than 15t over t square plus 9. So I think you can factor the left hand side. So it gives you 5t over. So 2 times 1. So it is t plus 2 times t plus 1. Bring this term to the left hand side. It's an inequality. So we can bring it to the left hand side so we get 15 t over t square plus 9 and we want that to be greater than 0 is that clear to you 
Yes. Yeah. Remember one thing that in this particular case, T is greater than or equal to zero, right? So T is positive. T is not negative. So if you get a solution which is not positive, then it is not the real solution. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Okay. So that is one thing. Now, to begin with, let us uh, take some estimate just to see, answer this communication question. This is an application and communication question. If I put T equals to zero, in that case, both are same. Do you see that? T equals to zero gives me both the things zero. Do you see that? So initially, we are saying that this equation models the bacteria count. They have the same bacteria count at t equals to zero, which is zero. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. But they both model t greater than zero. So we, this equation is only valid for t greater than zero. Right. Correct. Okay? Yeah. So uh, now, as t approaches a very large number, let's try to analyze what happens when t approaches a very large number. So if t approaches a very large number, both of them will approach what? See, denominator is of higher degree than numerator. So that means that the horizontal asymptote is zero, correct? Mm -hmm. So for a very large number, they're actually approaching zero. Okay, now let's try to solve this. So we'll take a common denominator, which is product of all these. I'll write this as t squared plus nine times t plus two times t plus one, multiply them, so 5t times t squared plus 9 minus 15t times both these factors, correct? Yeah. Which is, I'll write the standard form. That will be better because we have to expand, right? t squared plus 3t plus 2. And we want to show that this is greater than 0, right? There's less space. OK. Since t is greater than 0, so we know that t is greater than 0, right? So that means t is positive, correct? Yes. So we can divide both these sides by 5t. Is it OK? Uh, why are we doing that? And we can also multiply by, see, t is, all these terms are, if t is greater than 0, let's try to understand. In that case, t squared plus 9 is greater than 0, correct? Yes. t plus 2 is greater than 0. And mm -hmm. t plus 1 is also greater than 0. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. So we can multiply. They are all positive numbers. So we can multiply with all these numbers and cancels, right? Do you see that? Yeah. So what we get here is that we get 5t times t squared plus 9 minus 15t times, I'm doing it in small steps, uh, t squared plus 3t plus 2, right? We want to show that this is greater than 0. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Now, since t is greater than 0, see, the only thing in inequalities is that if you divide by a negative number, then inequality sign changes, correct? Right, yeah. Because t is positive, we can divide by it, sign will not change. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we cannot divide by 5t. You can divide all these terms by 5t, right? OK. So in that case, you are left with t squared plus 9 here minus, instead of 5, 15, it becomes 5t, right? Mm -hmm. 5t times t squared plus 3t plus 2 greater than 0. This is the inequality which you need to solve. Yeah, so we're only dividing like the co the leading coefficient by yeah. five. Well, I mean the whole term. So in the whole term, that five t is common factor, so you can cancel. Okay, so we don't need to do it for the the things in brackets because they cannot cancel. So I'm just simplifying in steps. Okay. okay. Right now mm -hmm. we have a quadratic equation to solve. 
right? Uh, in fact, the, oh, sorry, 5T. So this T also got cancelled, right? So 5T, this T is not there. Just 5. Oh, yeah. we do, so 3T, sorry, 3 is there. Sorry. We divide by 5T, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So times 3, <laughs> sorry for that. So 3 times T squared plus 3T plus 2, right? So that's a quadratic equation to solve. So let me expand this. And then, so we have next statement, which is T squared plus 9. Open this bracket, minus 3T squared minus 9T minus 6 should be greater than 0. Clear? Mm -hmm. So T squared minus 3T is minus 2T squared minus 9T and 9 minus 6 is 3, right? It should be greater than 0. Is that okay? Yeah. So so that is the equation which we need to solve. If I multiply by negative, so let me take it here. So if I multiply by negative, I have 2t squared. I want to keep the leading coefficient positive. Plus 9t minus 3 less than 0. Is this clear to you? So we multiplied by negative. Or you can take the term to the other side to make them all positive leading coefficient. Is it OK? Yeah. Now, can you factor this? 2 times 3 is 6, and we need a number. Now, we can use quadratic formula, right? We want this to be less than 0. Let us see if it is equal to 0 or what, correct? 2t squared can be, we'll use quadratic formula to factor to find whether it is equal to 0 or not. Is it okay? Okay. So, find factors. So, t equals to minus b, which is 9, plus or minus square root of 9 square, which is 81, minus 4ac, minus becomes positive, 4 times 2, 8, 8 times 3 is 24, square root, divided by 2 times a, which is 4. So, I have used the quadratic formula, which is x equals to minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 2a. Is that clear to you? Yes. Yeah. Can you use the calculator and find the value? t equals to minus 9 plus minus within square root. 81 plus 24. What do you get? Uh, one second, sir. I 105. Forgot my calculator. Okay, just get it. Divide by 4. Even I don't have it here, right? Yeah. Hmm. So we are looking for square root of 105. Square root of 100 is 10, correct? Mm -hmm. Square root of 100 is 10. Minus 9 plus 10 is going to give me a positive number. Do you see that? Could you repeat that, sir? <clears throat> Minus 9 plus square root of 10 will give me a positive number, right? Okay, yeah. Because we, we know that t is greater than 0, right? Remember, t is greater than 0. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So, So, one of the values which we are going to get from here is a positive value. So, which is what? Calculate. What do you get? Minus 9 plus square root of 105 divided by 4. So one of the answers is um, negative 6.4. So we'll neglect that. Mm -hmm. Negative 6.4. But I'll write down. So negative 6.4. Okay, that is one answer. The other one is what? Wait, I think I did a calculation. So do square root of 105 minus 9 divided by 4. So one answer is 0 0.3. Yes. Yeah. We do have an answer which is very close to 0, which is 0 0.3, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the value of t, so we have two zeros here, right? Which one of them is not counted. How? This is a quadratic equation. If you sketch this quadratic equation, it will be a parable of this kind. Do you see that? Yeah. And you get two values. One is 0 0.3, right? 
correct? Mm -hmm. Our graph is only valid for T, which is positive. Is it okay? Yeah. So say zero, right? But you can see that within this interval, the first point three, the uh, units are in which unit? What is time in? Uh, mm -hmm. T in days. Days, yeah. Days. So 0 0.3 days. For the first 0 0.3 days, f of t is greater than g of t. Because we got a valid answer, 0 0.3. Mm -hmm. You get the idea? So this inequality is true only for a very short duration of time, and that is 0 0.3 days. Okay. So you can say in hours, so 0.3 times 24. You see that? So, so many hours, it is uh, the, poly the pollution for back number of bacteria, bacteria count in the tap water is more than the bacteria count in the pond. Okay. Yeah. So that is what we have. So it in first 0.3 days. You can convert to hours, right? 0 0.3 into 24 hours, mm -hmm. correct? So, which is uh, 7.2, let's say seven hours. The pollution, I say bacteria count in tap water is more than that in the pond water. You get the idea? Yeah. That's a very small duration, but, but the statement you can justify now that yes, it exceeds, but for a very short period of time, so approximately seven hours, is that okay? Mm -hmm. 7.2 hours. So that is how you could actually answer this particular question. A lot of uh, calculation to be done. Yeah. Correct. Did you understand this? Yes. Good, thank you. As you saw in the video, there are a lot of calculations to be done. Now these questions are really difficult. And many times I've seen students struggling. But I hope with this solution, it becomes absolutely clear how should we solve such inequalities. Now, one of the most important things which you must have realized is that we can multiply both sides by an expression if we are sure that the expression will remain positive. And that really helps to simplify this and solve the inequality much faster than otherwise it would have been. I hope you understand it and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.